What's up, everybody? It's the Mike Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mycology game. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to level up, guys. We're trying to up, up, up. Get better, get smarter, get faster, get better. You get it. Um, I'm your host, Michael Geeky. Uh, tonight, uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do some fun stuff. Uh, no segments tonight. We're, we're we're going old school already. I, ha I had one episode of uh, segments. I loved it. Lots of positive feedback. I appreciate it. Um, we're definitely gonna keep doing segments. Uh, but tonight's guest. He's he just, he, you know, some people are just larger than life. They occupy a lot of space and they need a lot of time. You know, like, uh, it's like Enigma. It's just, you know, you got to give us some space. So uh, we're going to give that space tonight uh, for our guests. Uh, before that, I got to show you guys this. So uh, when we did the, the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway, uh, one of the vendors who uh, donated was a Philly Golden Teacher. And he said, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to do something special. I uh, want to design you a t-shirt to give away. So he, he did. We gave it away. And then he just sent me uh, the, the same t-shirt. I'm pretty touched. So I just want to take a moment to show it off. It's got all the, uh, I think it's like the first 10 uh, podcast guests that I had. So um, I just thought that was cool. Um, anyway, thanks again, PGT. Love you, man. Um, all right. Uh, next up on the docket, we're, um, so, uh, YouTube is not being nice to me, uh, it's about every other day, every day, uh, one of my videos is, uh, being demonetized, I guess the AI is just figuring out what we're talking about and doesn't like it, I don't know if I'm swearing too much, I don't know what it is, but they're just clicking away, uh, so, uh, the, the Patreon is becoming ever more important. Uh, I've been pretty overwhelmed. Uh, I've had a lot of people sign up for Patreon to support what we're doing here. I really appreciate all you guys. Um, you guys know who you are. I've already shouted you out uh, privately. Uh, maybe eventually I'll figure out how to be able to do the little, like, you know, the pull up the screen and, and do all that. I'll, I'll, I'll get working on that. We'll, we'll do that for next week for sure. Um, but again, thank you so much. Uh, I love doing this. Uh, I love celebrating all the wonderful people in the community. Um, and you guys are helping making that possible, so thank you. Anyway, uh, so tonight, Instagram celebrity in the mushroom community. If you're on Instagram you know who, and you don't know who this guy is, I, I don't know how. I mean, this guy is one of the most legendary Instagram accounts. And it, the account's legendary because the guy is legendary. If you get to know him, uh, he's a special dude. He is a talented, he absolutely talented musician, filmmaker, sh uh, mushroom grower. And tonight we're going to get to know him. So uh, we're going to bring him in in style. I am talking about one, no other person like this guy, Mushman9000. What is going on, my most excellent friends? Yeah, it's like a Cypress Hill concert in here, brother. <laughs> What's up, dude? Hi, how you doing? Oh, man. That's an intro. Hey. That's one for the books. Right on, brother. I'm just I like it. A little baby here, having a good time. I like it. Um, well, first off, uh, I'm I'm not even going to lie. I'm pretty excited. Um, oh, man. I am fired up. I'm not going to lie. You know, I had a couple mushrooms, so I'm feeling good. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Um, all right, Mushman 9000, Canopy Master. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if I am the Canopy Master. I, I'm badass dudes out there, man. No yes, and you are one of them, whether you like it or not. <laughs> and tonight it's your night. We're going to talk about your canopies. They are 
I never tire of, of looking at them, I can tell you that. So, for all the viewers who don't know you, aren't on Instagram, only on Facebook, only wherever. A lot of people not on socials, they're only doing the Discord thing. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure people understand why all us Instagram guys are so enamored by, by you as a grower. So, I'm, I'm, if you don't mind, I'm going to pull up some pictures. Yeah, and uh, maybe you can give us just a little context on them. Sure, I'll try. Oh. All right. All right. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I started at the end. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> Did you hear that, guys? I said, gosh, dang it. I'm nice. getting it. Oh, my lobby poop. All right. This is the shrine right here. That's that's my all the way from all right there. I love it. Now, this bad boy, I built specifically... These two rooms. So this is in between two eight by eight foot rooms. To okay. my left of the picture is my fruiting chamber. To the right is my incubator. And I built it that way. So whenever I'm working, my lap's kind of right in between the two, whichever direction I'm going. It all kind of stays where it needs to stay. But that is where I do all of my work. I spend a lot of time in there. I love it. Now, I just want to tell you. When I was a very new grower, I mean, I'm still a new grower, but when I was a brand new grower and I came across your account, I saw your little workstation here and I just absolutely idolized you instantly like, this guy has what I want. I want this. It, it felt like my home away from home. I was like, I want to be there. How can I get something like this for myself? You were very inspirational as far as... Um, kind of wanting to have ownership of my own lab. I think that's part of the, the evolution of a lot of at-home uh, cultivators is that honoring it and respecting it enough to where you get to the point and go, now I'm ready for a lab. I, I, I want a lab. I deserve a lab. I yeah. want to do some lab shit in a lab. Get me a lab. Totally. And, you know, like when I first built this lab, I didn't have any prints on the wall, and I built it with poly so I could clean it really easily, mm -hmm. always struck it down. But then I started putting up some sport prints and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna keep sport print everywhere. Because like, one thing about Mushman, I, I love prints. That's probably my favorite thing out of the whole thing. I got so many prints, man, I, I'm, in, I'm obsessed. So I started I just gonna hang them all over the place and eventually I'm gonna have that whole, whole three rooms just covered with prints. That's fantastic. All right, let me, pu let me pull the pics back up here. Yeah. All right, so now here we go, guys. There's a beauty top. So those are some hillbillies. Um, I originally gifted that culture from Agar Boy. Uh -huh. and I worked it a bit, and yeah, that's how they were spitting tubs for a good couple rounds, anyway, for sure. I love the hillbillies. They, I don't care what anyone says. They pack a good bunch. Uh, I mean, and you pack them in. <laughs> yeah, that that was a good one. Yeah, there's another one. I mean, look at that. They are just, you got them so packed in there, you're just like. For sure. And I was finding that, like, the ones in the middle, they were so tight, they wouldn't even open anymore. They didn't have any room to. Oh, so my gosh. I kind of had to just get in there. Yeah. Or eat There's another one. That's a beauty. Yeah. Gorgeous. All right. That's now, what's awesome. this? So, this one was done in, uh, in foam domes. You know what I mean by foam dome? Like the uh, home trays for growing yep. pot. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's like a vino from a mix. So I would blend in a bunch of different spawns together and okay. roll them out. Once I find the weirdest looking one that doesn't resemble the two masters, I tend to clone that and grow that out. So I was calling that Apri. It's not necessarily its own new strain or anything like that, but I think that's nice. where that came from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that one. I came down that morning and ate that big bastard right in the <laughs> bottom right there. First thing at like seven in the morning. Wow. Yeah, I was just like, holy, this must look right off. And they like did that in a very quick amount of time from nice. getting to that in probably like 48 hours. My goodness. All right, look, I mean, this one right here is just packed, dude. Well, that's his to us. I told you a little bit about yeah. that. It's a kind of idea. Um, I ran them for about six months and it just stopped completely. I, I only have a great point right now. But they they spat tubs like that almost every time. 
Wow. I'm fucking blown away. Yeah, I ended up in like, I don't know, 15 pounds of that. My goodness. And then this. They're yeah. like little stones, dude. It's yeah. like gravel. Right? Little space rocks from inner space. Like, I wasn't even sure at first what the hell was going on because it, this actually took a long time to get to that stage. It just wouldn't grow. They were kind of just stuck in as pins. And then all of a sudden, like, within a couple of days, that happened. And I was just like, whoa. Wow. Harvesting that was a motherfucker. I bet. I think I hope for my story. I think I, I was going to do a second flush, but it, it tore all the, all the stuff up. I wasn't able to. I mean, they look like stones, so I guess they, they grab the, the sub like stones, too. Yeah, they, they dug right in. It's kind of weird. Yeah, mm. yeah so this was on the, actually the second round of the next picture we'll show of the other direction. Okay. This one in two. It's like two shelves. So my pruning chamber there, I've got like six shelves on either end of the room. These are obviously ran inside of the domes, and then... I would just tape the two little domes have little air vents on the top. Okay. And I just put some micro pore tape on there, and just let them be, and that's how these other electors did their thing. Nice. Well, we're definitely gonna be talking about domes. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. All right, and then this picture, dude, I just can't. I don't. What do you want me to say, dear God? I don't know. I, when I came down that morning, man, I was so happy. I uh, I texted oh, this picture God. to my wife, and I was like, baby. Look at this. She was like, what the shit? And I was like, right, though? I was like, I don't even know where to start in here. Oh, and of course, I started way. by eating some. Yeah, and that's then, where yeah, you start. Yeah, that was, I was really happy. You know. That's amazing. Well, so I I think, I, I think I, uh, I do not regret one bit entitling uh, this podcast Canopy Master, uh, you know, dubbing you Canopy <laughs> Master. You, <clears throat> sure, there's other great growers, 100%, I agree, uh, but you definitely, no one's going to disagree right there. You you can absolutely pack a tub with, now here's the other thing though, yeah. is it's uniform. The uniformity is insane. Right. The, the, the evenness, the, you know, it, it just, blow, I, I have, I think, only approached something much watered down a couple times and every time i just thought god it, i'm i'm impressed with myself but this still looks like crap compared to to a mushman canopy <laughs> so so i i really want to get into talking about and, and we'll, we'll get into some of the history and and, and stumbling blocks and, and and you know lessons and whatnot but i really want to know if you're willing to talk about it what do you do right now to pack those tubs the way you pack them? All right. Well, we start wherever we got to start to to reach to reach that level of understanding. All right. So, and this is keep in mind anything that I say is just the way I do things. Actually. Sure, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found out from over a decade of doing what I'm doing that the best thing is it all starts with your good spot. You got a good spot. Good genetics there that's really going to help you out as far as getting those nice bull canopies now okay. substrates have been something i've been working a lot with over the years they constantly change forever until like probably just before last summer i really found one that works now okay. my ratios i do a 50 50. i'm a 50 50 guy that's how i do it. right okay. so you can apply it into any substrate you want now, my tubs are 27 liter tubs made by Sterilite or cooler ones. Right. And then I'll do, I do like two in there. And then line it with garbage bags. I know you're going to hate me for that. I'm sorry. I just, uh, that's what I'm using right now to line the tubs. My substrate that I use is 50% core and it's 50% peat moss. And then I add in about 10% of uh, compost and just recently, I went from like chicken compost to like a cow when we were based compost. All right. Oh, and I bring it up to my own field capacity every time using my hands. So I reach in, do the squeeze test. And like even when I'm doing bulk, I use my hands. Like I'm talking, I used to do 50 cups at a time. 
Yeah. I did every batch with my hands. I just feel that there's something that connects me with them as I'm doing that. You know, I think that's malarkey or whatever. But that's just. Mm -hmm. then, now, uh, so do you do you just check one spot, or how picky about checking various spots in in, in the the tub or whatever yeah, you're mixing in? A big like horse trough. And horse I, trough. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much filled right up, and I constantly am checking it as I'm adding water. Now, once I feel that it is at its fuel capacity, I pack it down and I leave it. I put a blanket over it, and I'll okay. go smoke some weed or whatever for half an hour. I'll come back and check it again. Because nine times out of ten, it, it absorbs more, and it doesn't have that capacity. Right, okay. Now, for me, too, my tubs, there are no holes. They're just straight from the store and line. So I find that if I add extra extra water to my sump that that moisture inside of that tub really builds up now i'm able to hand fan my tops which i do three times a day for okay. upwards of a minute every single one i'll blow a fan in there and i'll move all that air around that's how i've been getting all now as far as my genetics that i use obviously genetics help because if i run like a multi sport i'll still get a really good run but it won't be like as dense as let's say those snow billies right. that have been worked on. So yeah. you you do when you're hunting, you you are going back to multi spore syringe and, and knocking out bags? Only like okay. quite often actually. Um, and the cooling well like multi spore for me, because I ran nothing but multi spore for the first five years of growing. And obviously I had a lot of failure with that because I didn't really know I had to learn control by myself and from a guy that kind of showed me the ropes a bit and that's all I knew and the first part of it was I was buying spores from a company that was just selling me like water syringes and I was like what's going on mm -hmm. but once I learned how to use spores properly and be cleanly with them man they're very powerful and you can find some of the most amazing things inside of those multi-sport tubs so I am always going back to find something that I'm like wow I'm going to work with that one. So when uh, when you say work with them right, what what were some of the mistakes you were making in, in the beginning and, and what are... Um, yeah. Because to be quite honest, most people these days are not working spore syringes, yeah. at, at least in my, my, my circles, but yeah. talk to me. The ones I use here, they're like uh, 10 mil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got like... A, I think that's a 14 gauge on there. Mm -hmm. Now, so now how you mix them? Because I'm assuming you do prints. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming a lot of you guys want to take a take a print. Maybe you don't. I don't know. I can tell you how I take my prints. So I'll I'll be uh, usually in front of my flow hood, and I'll cut the cap face down on some tin foil that I wipe with alcohol. Yeah. And I'll put them down, and I'll usually do anywhere from you know 10 to 15 prints. And then I'll put that like a little dome on top of it, like a little baby cup, and set that on there for 24 hours. Come back, lift them, and then put them away. Now, when I first started working with prints and syringes, and in all my my co work, I wasn't very sterile, and I think that that was really making a making it really hard <laughs> to grow because I get contamination on the grains like right out of the gate almost all the time and then I would get contamination later on down because I wasn't, I just wasn't cleanly. Once I cleaned all that up and actually came to a, I moved to a house and then I had room to kind of build things the way that I thought was going to work the best. And after I did that, everything kind of changed. Like like that lab we showed, I have constant pressure pulling in there and three of us. And then I have my products. I have happens in both my other rooms. So there's constant fresh air that's just getting put through there all the time. Right. I always shower before I go into that room, you know, nine out of ten times. To make sure so, so you literally shower before, clean clothes, you, you really take the, the sterility when seriously. I'm working, when I'm working with spores, I suit up, I put on you know, a little suit, I make sure I got my mask on, and yeah, I try to be as clean as I can. Right. Now there's a couple different ways you can go about doing spores, how I like to do it is I'll take, I got this little tiny mini, like mason jars, they're mini, they're like literally mm -hmm. this big, I found them at the Dollarama, and I fill that up with distilled water, 
and I pressure cook it. I pressure cook it for 90 minutes. And then I'll take my scrapings. I'll take a little print that I want, whichever area that I'm looking at, and it's literally calling me and telling me, hey, and I'll scrape it in there and then shake it up and then I'll inject my syringes out of there. Right. And from there, I go to drain. I know a lot of my black and it's like, but I know that the process I'm doing is clean and literally I don't have that much failure when I do it now. Right. I can't go to agar from there, but I go straight to greens and just see what pops out of those. Now that's so now, I had a lot of failure doing that at first. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm talking years of mm -hmm. failure of doing this kind of shit. Like kind of over and over, almost repetitively, not really understanding why. You know, I understand now completely, and I'm not necessarily recommending it to anybody to do it that way. That's just no much better. It works. It works really well. All right, brother. Can you get a little closer to your if your microphone's in your computer? Yeah. Uh, I've had a few people say they're 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 missing some of what you're saying. That's all right. How's that? Improved. Okay. Or I can just I can talk louder. I got a loud voice. E e either or. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> okay. It's good. Um, so so with the spore syringes. Um, I remember when I first got into it, uh, you know, I got real enticed by just extremely dense amount of spores. Yeah. Even e even on the swabs now, right? Like, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to deny how appealing a really blue, you know, pasty looking swab tip is. Um, yeah. But as I've learned to work with them, I actually find that it's too much. Is how do you figure out like the right do, like do you just want to see like a light peppering of spores in the syringe what what's sort of your gauge yeah so you know it's all by kind of like the same way I gauge my sub it's by eye I just take a look right. at it and then inside of those little jars I'll know and it's there's no scientific term for me it's just a couple straight grooves and okay. it goes you know it's not oh, like so it. you're really yeah you're it's not the whole print you're just yeah, just a couple. You don't need. That's, okay. Hey, that's a shit. Burning, that's a lot of spores. Right. You, know what I mean? right. If you don't need a big, dark, thick spore syringe. Okay. You can see them. There's millions of them there. You know, right. so you don't need much. Go a long way. Definitely. Okay, that's cool. And now, when you're knocking your jars, you gotta understand too. People might be like, "Oh, the more, the better, the quicker." You're adding in too much water, and you're gonna right. you're gonna mess all your jars up, right? So literally half a cc is all off. Yeah, what I what I found, you can tell me what you think about describing it this way. Like, if I use liquid culture, I want it to, I squirt it on the edge of the jar, and I want it to dribble, like, dribble down the, the side, but I really don't want anything to pool up at the bottom. Yeah, same kind of idea with the spore syringe. Okay, so and you're trying to really wet it, but not... Yeah, when you yeah. tilt it, you'll actually see some of the spores sitting on the side of the glass the the... Okay. I eat dry berries, since I've always used dry berries. Uh, it's what I learned on from the beginning. Right. And that's, I have a like a local farm. I shouldn't say too local. It's only a three-hour drive all the way to get it. That's the closest thing to me. Wow. And they're a big organic grain farm, so it's pretty awesome to support local at the same time. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. So, so you uh, let's go back. Somebody mentioned something here. Um, yeah. On the one-to-one, the, -one, the doing the 50-50 spawn to sub, um, I, it might even have been you who told me this. Uh, and the minute I did it, I did it with some ODPE, and all of a sudden, bam, I, I was not as tight as you, but I was definitely packing tubs a lot better. Um, I, I found I didn't really get a, a second flush that was very impressive, but that first flush just comes fast and furious, and... And especially when you, I guess, if you're running rye berries, this would be similar. Um, but I was running millet, and my millet really helped that out. Now, when I went popcorn, popcorn, I tended to get clusters on it, whereas uh, the, the millet was better. So I think the smaller inoculation points yeah, seem to help cool. that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've just found that ever since I've done that, get good, good flushes. Now, are you... If you can maintain your substrate, how many flushes are you trying to get out of a cake? Okay, so I used to go for as many as I could. That was kind of my name. Like once I started to see that I was getting flushes like that, I was like, well, I want to know how many, so I would keep them around. But then if I had a little bit of contamination, it would kind of 
it would go through my room. Right. And so I decided at that point it's not even really worth it for me. So what I did was do two, and then now I'm just doing one and done, and I swap them. Yeah. I'm frequently a one and doneer. I don't have the space to do more. And, you know, uh, I, I used to, and these days I'm I'm not growing as many tubs, but I'm actually getting more in the end out of less hmm. tubs. But I've been doing a lot more R and D inside of my lab to get to that point. So, multi spore, yeah. direct to grain, yeah. sterile water, good technique. Yeah. Still a great way to find a vigorous genetic, right? Sure. You're in a clean room and everything's clean. As long yep. as you're clean, you're working in front of a, in some sort of flow hood. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So now when, when you get that tub and you're yeah. hunting, are, are, are you cloning or are you swabbing? I clone from the multi spore. Yeah. So I you're won't cloning start the best. Okay. Yeah. I won't start my swabs until I start getting fuller canopies and more of the same genetic throughout. <laughs> so you maintain that original clone off that desired phenotype. That's right. Until you feel like there's a little bit of consistency with it. That's right. And then you'll go, then you'll start swabbing and, and swabbing. doing, okay. Yeah. And then I'll go to my agar. Now agar is, is very new to me. I've only okay. been doing it for maybe, maybe two years now, I think. Okay. Well, it's 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 new. I had some friends on Instagram that kind of pushed me that way. It was like, well, you we should we should try it out because all I was doing before that was all the sports ranges. And once I learned how to clone, and I was like, well, this is this is fun. <laughs> right. Just kind of rolled with that. And started doing that. That's awesome. Um. So. If anybody has really combed through your, your Instagram, they might have happened upon uh, something that you called floor tech. Ah, floor tech, yeah. And I think I think we should tell that story. Yeah. Um, it's it's kind of cool. Floor, floor tech was just like one of those things when you're just sitting around, well, for me, you know, still thinking of different ways I could fruit because I fruited in a lot of different things, man. Like a lot of different things. I'm always kind of looking for something fruit. Go to Walmart. That's all I'm doing is looking around. Like, can I fruit in that? Or am I can fruit in that? You know, like all these all right. things. I bring them all home. I got a storage locker full of stuff that's been fruited. Oh, uh, that's funny. One day I'm just really still staring at the floor, and I'm like, why can't I just grow these things on the goddamn floor? So I just I built a, a box at two by fours. I lined it with poly, mm -hmm. and I I I filled her up and. I sealed it up with poly on top, ping, 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 with a freaking staple gun, left it, and then I was coming back and looking at it. Now, the staples happened to be like that far apart, like not even on purpose, which mm -hmm. was actually allowing enough air exchange to get in there. <clears throat> wow. I, you know, so then I come down one morning, and, and I'm like, holy shit, it's working. I was like, what do I do? I was like, do I fuck with it and pull this off and start banning it, or do I just leave it? And I left it, and it started to push that thing right up until I pulled it off. And I was wow. just like, it was literally just set and leave it. And it did that probably three or four different times. So I think this year I want to try it again, but I'm going to go my whole entire like floor in there and see what happens. Oh my God, that's going to be a photo, dude. Yeah. So what, did you ever weigh that your yield on, on, on one flush? Was on it just flush. insane? Yeah, oh yeah, I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, yeah, especially uh, like four tech where you've got. Like now, uh, how thick would the cake be? I'm curious. Was it thin or was it a couple inches, three yeah, inches? Like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, three to four inches, okay. Yeah, it was pretty thick. Yeah. That, that's and incredible. I, if I would have sealed that on any tighter, it wouldn't have worked because it wouldn't have got that, that airflow. He had to get the stapling schedule just right on that. That's right, just throwing them on your wrist, spacing them out. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, totally no, it, nice. it worked. And then I, like, I was like, wow, I got to try that again just to see if that's what really happened. And that's what it was because it kept, kept repeating itself. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I remember back in the day I was in another Discord and everybody was talking about doing like a kiddie pool 
grow. They want to grow out of a kiddie pool. So yeah. when when I saw your uh, when I saw your floor tech, I said, "Well, okay, that's how that's how you make the you know yeah. don't need to do the kiddie pool anymore. We just went straight yeah. to the floor." And yeah, yeah, for sure. I bought the polyethylene for a buck. And then That's the wood awesome. was like some old wood I had, and I just wiped it down. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so good. you live in kind of the middle of nowhere. You just said your nearest grain supplier is a three-hour drive. Yeah. The closest, like, town to get, like, good amount of groceries or any of that is an hour and 45. I'm way on the backside of a beautiful lake called Chushwat Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, the back area of my house is all forest, and the front's all lake. And there's Some not a lot around. Room. Yeah, there's not too many people in this community out here yet. Slowly, you know, people are kind of finding it and working their way out. But mm -hmm. when we bought this place, a lot of it in mind was for what I'm doing now. I knew that I needed to have a certain amount of room. Right. So this place has a nice size shop. And three quarters of the shop are built underground. So when I seen that, I was like, wow, like, I'm going to be growing underground and I was like, there's some, there's a connection there. Like instantly my mind, mycelium, you know, I was like, this is going to be beauty. And I think that really helps with holding in my temperatures from my roof because they don't fluctuate hardly at all. I can just nail dialed right in. I think. I'm sure. Are, yeah. I'm sure yeah. that's, that doesn't I mean, work. Fully insulated too, but something will be in underground. I mean, I mean, well, we don't all have that luxury. You definitely no. lucked out on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because so that, I was growing in, in giant sea cans, and I had those all dialed in. Okay. Those were kind of hard to grow in the winter time, but they were fun to grow in. So now you, so what are your growing temperatures then? Are are you controlling temperature and humidity, or are you just it is what yeah, it is? Yeah, temperatures. So my room, seventy five, seventy five point two, like okay. that's no pretty temp. My incubator is set at 78. 78, so, okay. Yeah, and that's where I'm, and it's in dark all the time. And then my green chamber is 12 and 12. Now, what about uh, humidity? Because I have to assume, I mean, if, if in Ohio I deal with this issue in the winter where the humidity drops in my basement, I'm thinking you must lose humidity in the winter, right? Yeah, you know what? It's actually, it pretty much stays the same. And that's what I'm worried about because it's, underground like that yeah wow. like it doesn't really fluctuate no temperatures no humidity it just so do you do, and like it, just, it can hit like high 30s celsius you know so it gets bloody hot wow. and i'll go in yeah. there and it's fine you know what i mean like i don't even have to run these seas. i put holes through the first time i was in there running acs and i was like i don't even need this in here like it just stays right. cool and then now i have heat in there like i run heaters so it heats it up but it just holds the right way. Now, so are the walls cinder block? Mm -mm. Hmm. They're just straight concrete. It is, Back okay. And the sides, the front and the walls to my lab have been framed in. Okay. Shout out okay. to my stepdad for doing that for me. Yeah, yeah. I wonder, uh, because my problem is the whoever owned the house before we got it, they, uh, you know, they did the weather or the waterproof coating. So the okay. cinder block doesn't breathe. Yeah. And, and um, man, I bet I would have maintained better humidity in the winter if they if it breathed a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe I'm making what that I up. did. I lined it all with insulation, and then I polyed it. Well, and then I plywood three quarter inch, and then polyed it. Nice. Yeah. So it's a completely controlled atmosphere, and I think by running constant air through there throughout the three rooms, that it's just. I don't know. It stays the way it should. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I struggle with that. In the, you know, in the summer it's great, but in the winter it just, just drives a bone down well, here. It's like thing, 19. For me, out here, we get power outages. And, like, when they go out, they go out. We went for seven days without power out here, and that oh. killed my entire crop because I didn't have any backups going, and it got right. It ended up getting cold enough in there that it, it killed everything. Wow. Which was a real bummer. Yeah, I, well, we just I had the power go out recently, and I, I was complaining. And I think it was nine hours. I thought yeah. I had it bad. So I got a wood stove. It's how we heat the house, and that was my lifeline. Like we cooked on it, and we all kind right. of stayed in the little area. But, yeah, 
that man. Now I have a generator, so if it goes out, I just bring my Jenny down. I can fire That's it up. Okay. And I can have a two kit at That's ten. Good. All right, so you do one to one fat canopies. You definitely amend your substrate. I, I mean, we. I, I think ever since doing this podcast, um, the message has been absolutely you can grow mushrooms with cocoa, straight cocoa or cocoa and verm, hundred yep. percent. No one's going to disagree with you. If yep. you want to eke a little more performance out of your mushrooms, if you want a little, you know, bigger, better, more potent mushrooms. You might want to consider adding some some extra juice. Yeah, throw some throw some peat, I'm telling you, peat moss and cocoa. If you wonders together. Now you probably oh, have better access to it up there. I, I imagine your forests are literally covered in it, right? Well, we have there's farms, a lot of farms too. So there are some farm retailers about an hour for you way that sell all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They're local, so I support them. Nice. So it is easy for me to get. I was like, what it was hard to get was verm. I couldn't get it. And when I could get it, the guys locally were charging so much for it. I said, I'm not using it anymore. I'm done with it. And I made that decision. And I haven't gone back. Now, have you ever tried uh, straw? Because a lot of guys have been talking about straw. I've not tried it yet. but Straw. That was the very first thing I learned to grow on. So... Straw logs, actually, and I was I learned half from a buddy and half from how to grow mushrooms YouTube Roger Rabbit videos, the old okay. ones that look like their VHS. Right, and they thought, were. Yeah, and he taught you to pasteurize the straw. You know, you wash it first and then you pasteurize it, and then you pack them into these bags, making little nests. Pack a straw in, and you put a little mycelium spawn in there. Pack it in there, nice and tight. And you poke a bunch of holes into it. Then you just put those on some shelves, and away they go. Now, at first I had really bad success. I had, like, failure contamination. Then they just weren't growing fast enough. They were sitting too long. They wouldn't fully colonize. Right. And so that's when we started to add more spawn. And we did start to get success, but it was dirty. It was a lot of work, and I found it to be dirty. So later on, I ended up taking spawn or a sub and using cut up pieces of straw and kind of mixing it in there. I did that for a little while too, but overall just having straw bales around and just working with the straw, I didn't like it. So I stopped. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so 50, 50 core verm. Yeah. Uh, and then and like 10% of that mixture, you're going to throw in some compost. Okay. Yeah. I was using chicken for a long time. Found it worked really good. Or, yes. you know, now I'm using some, there's cow, there's horse, what else can I get? I don't know. And, and, and you are just pasteurizing. Yeah. And I make sure I keep it at 170. Okay. And I do for upwards, upwards of two and a half, three hours. Now, are Four. you, do you have a, a cooker of some sorts or something that's, that's maintaining that? Yeah. So I have two. I have a bubble barrel, 55 gallon bubble barrel. Okay. Uh, which I bought from Bubble Barrels in the States, nice. which I found from Myers Mushrooms, and it works great. It works really good. That's what I'm doing larger, larger amounts. I'm just doing, you know, let's say, ten tubs or something, five to ten tubs. I do a coop the cooler tech, so I fill up my sterilizer halfway with water, my pressure cooker. I run a tube out of that into my cooler, and then I take the thermometer from my bubble barrel run it into the middle of the top bag inside of the cooler, close it up and use the steam from the pressure cooker to just do a smaller batch. Right. Yeah, so you're 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 being meticulous about the actual pasteurization. Yeah. You're you're not just you know, simmer problem. some water and yeah. So I think it actually it makes a big difference for sure. And not to go over, not to start sterilizing. Because then you're gonna kill a lot of things yeah. that you put in there. Yeah. I, so, you know, I, I use that MPG Plus, and I, I think we're accomplishing similar things um, right. in different ways. But, but I, I think your way has probably got more uh, very organic bacteria uh, activity that, that the mushies might uh, be really responding to. Because, I mean, they're, obviously they're responding to it. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. the pictures. So. And, I've, and keep in mind, like, I have tried a lot of different things along the way. I, I 
practice. I've been over a decade. I've tried them all, you know, almost. <laughs> and these are what I'm finding at the end of the day that work the best for me. <laughs> yes. Maybe not for everyone, just but that's how it works for me. So, so right. ten, so ten years. How did you? I, I guess I missed. I usually do the tell me your your Mica origin story. Uh, we missed that amidst the fog and the cool mask and uh, the amazing intro. But why don't we do kind of, um, you know, have you always loved mushrooms? When did you first really fall in love with mushies? That, yep. that whole thing. Cool, man. So mushrooms presented themselves to me at a very young age, I think. I was just had turned 14 years old, and I was kind of, I was smoking a lot of pot at the time. And then some friends of mine, you know, were starting to get into mushrooms and eating mushrooms. And I tried some, and right away I knew that they chose me at a young age, kind of almost for a reason. Like, I connected on this level that I was like, wow, is this like, is this even real? This is, right. this can happen to a human being? <laughs> and I kept eating them quite often. Now, in my little town, I grew up in, it was kind of a spread out town. It was a lot of orchards and lakes. And there wasn't, you know, a lot of, let's say, dealers to buy from around. So mushrooms were really hard to find, especially a 14-year-old kid. Now, we would take a bus and we were close to the city, and there was a dude that would sell them out of his window. It was kind of weird. But one day, we are smoking weed at this bridge where we all used to hang out, like S Creek, and we don't smoke weed there. And my one buddy comes up, and he's like, dude, he's like, I know where there's a shit ton of mushrooms growing right now. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like magic mushrooms? And he's like, yeah, like a lot of magic mushrooms. And I'm like, huh, okay, prove it. So like four or five of us follow him up in the middle of this orchard, man. And there was a little shed sitting there. And we cracked open this drawer, dude, and I looked inside, and there was a lot of mushrooms growing in there. And I just grabbed what I could, and I took off, and I ate a lot of mushrooms like i had emptied out my whole backpack and filled it up with these mushrooms wow. what i know now were like ginormous strain of penis envy they were just like monsters man yeah and i tripped so hard like to a point where it was like intergalactic shit, man and I that changed you. my life for a while definitely um but i knew that mushrooms had this Sort of that that's why they call them magic they had that magic yeah. power you know i knew somewhere down inside i was gonna be okay even though i wasn't like i was so messed up but anyway fast forward through time i ate them all the way through but i stopped for you know a good six seven years of my life i just didn't eat them i took acid and mm -hmm. <laughs> i started to get into acid for a few years and then mushrooms came back to me when, you know, I was kind of moving out in this direction. And I was like, wow, it's a lot of nature. I want to get back into shrooms. I had a buddy, and he's the one that, that got me on the throne because he was growing in a little tiny Martha that he had. And I was buying all this product. I was just like, I was buying them up so much that I was like, man, I need to learn because I need to feed myself here. Right. And that's, that's kind of what put it into high gear for me. And at that point, I was like obsessed, and then I started looking it up, started growing, eating at first just for my own personal, which I still, you know, do obviously. But I was able, along the way, to help other people out and start freeing some minds. And that's why I'm kind of still doing it too. And I, I believe, in the bottom of my heart, that mushrooms are going to change the world. We're going to heal things that need to be healed. You know, so we got to keep all of us rad, excellent people. That's that the hope. Alive. That's the hope. It can do it. If, we if, are doing it right now. That that that's that's what we got to do. We got to advocate. We got to be uh, the spokespeople. That that's what I think we're all. We we get it. We've experienced it. We want it for other people. Yeah. I mean, I got a short list of people at work. Just all day at work, I'm just like. Man, you know what you really need? You need to come over to my house, and we need to we need to adjust your thinking. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Now, do you, do you microdose or 
I, I do that too. Yeah, that's that's actually how I got into it for my ADHD. Okay. Yeah, and, and it helps. It's It honestly helps probably slightly more than I thought Adderall did or Wellbutrin did. Um, okay. None of those were, were really, they didn't really solve the problem either. They just sort of gave me a different set of behaviors that sort of overpowered some of the ADHD tendencies, whereas I, I feel like I do get more clarity my only problem is I wish I could just take them every single freaking day and then I would be great because then by that, you know, uh, on my off days, I feel like I lose some of that mental clarity and focus and I get a little more distracted. But right. yeah. yeah, but yeah, I like that too. I, I think they're both powerful. I, I think yeah. both can be used. And uh, for me, I have to, the day I microdose, I have to set that intention of like, I have to acknowledge I'm microdosing today. I, like like have it in me that I know this is the day that I'm I'm gonna whatever I lost for a couple of days I'm gonna get it back and in most days it works out just like that so I mean for me it works noticeably better than any actual big pharma medicine I was ever on and it's all natural yeah, yeah. yeah. it's done so, wonders I did really large dose over a year ago of quit smoking one large dose. Instantly. I have heard that. I have heard that. I mean, that was a ride. I think it was like 15, 15 grams, might have been more. And man, I'm telling you, like I just, for three days before that trip, I told myself that I wanted to quit. And I like right. tried to program it into my head. But those mushrooms, they did it for me. They literally did. And it's amazing. I think they have like these crazy magical powers. Well, people under, got to understand that it's medicine. I mean, you can use it for recreation for sure. I do. Right. Yeah. I do lots, but I also use it for medicine. For, Correct. For so, yes. Um, yeah. That's really for me what. Um, that's the distinction. I, I hope that in the next, say, five or ten years, the 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 masses can understand is just because a government decided something was illegal at one point in time doesn't mean that there's no value in it. When every single day I hear stories of. I, I took a big, uh, I had a good significant trip, whether it's a heroic trip or even just kind of a regular trip, and I, I got off heroin, I stopped smoking, I, I this, I that, I the other thing, and I'm just like, I don't know how many stories I got to hear before yeah. everybody gets it, but, but I'm already there, I get it. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do that. Yes, yeah, so, same with even like a half gram or a one gram dose. Um, I it's they call it museum dose. I I find I with certain varieties I can really hit a euphoria that just makes me appreciate uh, all the good stuff in my life in a way that that maybe I had lost sight of and stuff like that. So um, man, I you I can go on and on about how much I love it and why it's so great and why I've. Yep. Gone so deep so fast down this uh, down this new lifestyle here. Yeah. Growing them like that just consumed me. As soon as I started growing them, like, I was like, I just, this is what I want to do the whole time. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so so very young. You I I I wasn't quite as young as you. And, and for me, the problem was. I never had as I I didn't luck into finding somebody's little grow shed in the middle of nowhere. Um, we we would get the most pathetic little bag of mushrooms, and by the time we divided amongst all my my musician buddies, we probably weren't taking that many mushrooms to check. just enough to be happy and laugh at everything, and you know maybe a little little visual, but. Um, so I never had the same experience when I was young as you did. But. I don't think a lot of people did. And you know what? It was actually pretty fucking stupid. You know what I mean? Because sure, could have been home and just beat the crap out of us. And out there, there were some bad dudes around. You know what I mean? So right. not to say that I would have went missing or anything. But I don't know. Like I said, I feel the mushrooms brought me there to do that, to experience them on such a huge level. And I still think about like that place, man. And, like it's set up and what he at the time I didn't know what he, what was going on but now I do know what he was doing. He had yeah, giant sure. straw beds, man. He was yeah, going he on giant straw beds. Wow. And in this walk in the room was so humid and wet and everything was so wet but it was dark the first time I went in there. Mm -hmm. And they got going back. 
Yeah, man. We have. We have it up. <laughs> it's probably good that guy never found you, man. He had to wrung your guys' neck. Oh, dude, man. It Just was, it was gnarly. Devious went, teenagers, went, dude. My one buddy went there that night, man, and he's like, "There's, he's like, there's what?" I was telling him, I was like, "There's a lot of mushrooms at this place, in the middle of this orchard, man." I was like, it's "Unbelievable." Went wow. there and we took the rest of them, man. But he ran right through that guy's house. I remember he kicked the freaking front door of that place in and ran through there screaming. He came out and said, wow. yeah, he's like, there's no one home, man. I'm like, holy wow. shit. Yeah, it was gnarly. They were walking up the orchard with like four or five garbage bags. Well, cool. and I'm like, we can bring you to your mom's house, man. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, my mom's cool, mm-hmm. man. And we bring them there. And I didn't know how to drive or anything. So we just dumped them out on the floor <laughs> or in his basement. The whole shit, like a shitload, man. Uh, and then his mom comes down. She's like, oh, mushrooms, eh? She's like, okay, well, be careful. Just, like, went upstairs. Yeah, wow. And, like, over a course of a week, I was just over at his house, just, like, eating them and watching them dry. And, yeah. <laughs> Funny story is we got rid of them at a local restaurant downtown in the city. We literally walked right into this, like, it was like a Greek tavern restaurant. My buddy knew the guy there. We just walked right into the restaurant, just like I got ripped off because I didn't want any better at the time. Yeah, man, it was <laughs> that whole thing was really bizarre. Dude. Youth. Yeah. Yeah. Youth. I'm youth. 14 and, and not knowing anything about anything. I'm 40 now and I still don't know anything about anything. Yeah. You know? But, yeah. yeah. Well, so. So you, you I mean, I, so I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Sure. I, of, of course, I'm not condoning, you know, taking massive uh, doses of magic mushrooms at 14. But oh. on the flip side, I'm sitting here going, I wonder what positive effect that might have had on my life. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how having such a significantly intense trip, still a, you know, budding teenager... How do you feel that that influenced how you saw the world, how you related, uh, maybe even spiritually? You know, do you want to speak to any of that? Yeah, for sure. And I mean, when I say it changed me as a person, I mean, it, it, it really did change me as a person almost instantly coming out of something like that. Going into it, I never really believed in a religion, mm-hmm. but I believe that good people go to good places and good souls move on. Bad souls, okay. bad people go to bad places. Now, when I was under a trip like that, where I was completely out of my body and not understanding what was going on at all, like the power of psilocybin, I had no idea. And like, it was mind altering me at the time. It was firing up so many synapses that it literally sent me to a place where, you know, I kind of understood now. And I kind of understood beings, humans, life in general. I had a lot more respect for things as simple as, you know, I'm just air breathing, but like trees. I instantly fell in love with forests and, and everything else. When before, you know, I might be walking and just like going through there and say, oh, yeah, there's some trees. You know what I mean? But now I stop yeah. and be like, wow, this tree, for one, is massive. And look at this. This thing has been here for so long. The things that it's seen, the things that it's yeah. doing right now, you know, like none of that existed before I ate mushrooms. And the large dose that I took really set me into that path. Now, later in life, I even dove deeper into things such as DMT. Okay, DMT has shown me things that mushrooms have me. Right. They have brought me to places that are our makers. It's it's their playground. You know what I mean? I believe you I I seen our maker in one form or another, and that was through DMT. Hey man, you're 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 a true. This is also why I wanted you on, uh, not just for your amazing canopies, but because you really are a psychonaut, and it is because you. I think that early experience gave you that eye-opening understanding of more and bigger and honoring life and energy and all that stuff, and so you you continued to explore. Yeah, and the older I got. I kept going back and doing more and like I've taken, I think the most I ate in one sitting was 28 
full twenty eight grams dry. And wait, so how much? Wait, say that again. Twenty eight an ounce. Wow. Yeah, and that was over probably. It took about ten to almost fifteen minutes to get that down. It's not easy eating that many. Man, like for one, your body I needs can't imagine. mushrooms. I've never liked the taste of them. You know what I mean? I can eat them, but I've never been like. Mm. I have a couple buddies like, oh fuck, these are delicious. You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh. I start sweating before I eat them, like, I yeah. just, but I can just keep eating them, you know what I mean? And the older I got, I really took some big, big doses and learned to control it really well. So instead of necessarily losing my mind to the realms, I keep it in this one and just totally have, like, I don't know, these experiences, man, that come out of the morning and be like, you know, I just, like, I just accomplished something there. Maybe I don't know what it is right now, but I feel different, you know? That's awesome. <laughs> Something is different about me. Yes. Well, I mean, you are a very loving, accepting, celebrating, unique soul who I have found so far. And you are extremely creative. Um, why don't we start, because I'm kind of getting a little... Uh, you leaned back there for a second. I, I was reminded about your shirts. So for those of you guys who don't know, um, you know, everybody's got shirts, right? We all got t-shirts. We can go to Printful. We can get our t-shirts. We can go to Etsy. We can go wherever. But Mushman, he makes one-off, one-of-a-kind special shirts, which I think he's wearing one right now. This was a fun one I made. But each I love one it. I hand, I hand draw it, hand press it. Try to get amazing. a cool one out there. Anybody ever wants one? Let me know. Yeah, man. The very few people have them. You, you know, you gotta, you gotta ask real nice. Yeah. Um, and and he will, uh, he'll make it happen. But yeah. Uh, so I, I, I just get emotional talking about you uh, w with other people because you're just such a unique soul that you know, you just represent for me. You know, you're the guy that makes the T-shirt. You take the time, just like you said. I want to feel the. I want to feel the field capacity. Like, what is field capacity? It isn't a fucking thing written down. It isn't a formula. You know what it fucking feels like in your hand. Yeah. yeah. And There's something to be said for that. That's that's the old ways, man. That's yeah. the ways that aren't written in books and formulas and tape measures. And, well, I think yeah, that's I cool. I'm connected to mushrooms on a level that I don't know if a lot of people are or not because it's one of those things it's hard to explain to somebody well you know yeah. so I'm like, what how what is your connection to it? and it's hard for me to put it into words right but you know i feel like and that comes back to doing that such young age that they just are connected with them yeah, yeah. yeah. so so besides t-shirts yeah. uh guys um that is just a tiny fraction of mushman's creativity i could not possibly get him on here and not talk about uh, his incredible... So I also have a, a musical past. I was in a band. I worked with a lot of artists producing music and stuff like that. And uh, Mushman is... Uh, if you guys know Prince, Stevie Wonder, you know, they, they, they when they write the song, it means they literally wrote the song. They, they wrote every part. They played the piano, the drums, the guitar, everything. Yeah. Mushman yeah. is that guy. Thanks, and he is a really, really talented, really fun uh, musician. Um, he's now, you know, he's like he said, he's 40. He's got a family, um, but he's still rocking. And I would love if, if he doesn't mind. Uh, yeah. Can we take a second just to play a clip for everybody? Yeah, please do. Right on, All right. Play. So I. He's done a lot of stuff. He's told me all about it. He was in the heavy metal scene for quite a while, open for a bunch of great bands. Uh, so he, he's quite talented. But this is a pretty recent project, right? What yeah. I'm about to play? Yeah. All right. This is called uh, Hooper. You want to talk about where the, the idea for the name of the song came from? Jaws, baby. Nice. Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So without further ado, we're, we're going to play... It is uh, about a one-minute clip. It's a, a verse and a hook, just to give you a taste of, uh, I, I guess I want to do this because I give you a, a taste of what the mushies can do for you. 
because yeah. this is, I think, part of what, what they're doing for him. So, uh, here we go. Yeah, I take vitamins every day. That's a six gram microdose of psilocybin ray. I connect with the future, keep aliens at bay. Blast off to the universe, inhale to me, free I play. All of along, I've been taking the time, I'm suckling life, and I almost died. I'm feeling alone, I begin to cry. Then I wake up and I realize the moment we're born is the moment we try to understand humans to the skip we call life. <laughs> Bro, god dang, the whole world's going to shit. I couldn't fucking agree with you more, which is why we need those six gram micro doses. Yeah, please, please. Yes. Really good. Really good. Dude, that's hard. I mean, I will go to that concert. And yeah. uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, that's, you're on drums. Yeah. Guitar, oh, bass, yeah. vocal. Yeah, and then stuff. all the graphics, you did it all. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's your creation. Gotcha. Baby. I like it. Thanks, That's great. That's Thank so you. cool. Appreciate that. Nice. So cool. Yeah. So so let's let's talk just a little bit because uh, I think this is significant. I think uh, I've talked a little bit on the podcast about how many people I've met in this community who do have ADHD or uh, addiction history. They're sort of like uh, almost like trends of personality types uh, that I see in this community uh, over and over again. And actually musicians, I would say also qualify. I, on my Discord, there are a lot of musicians. You know, everybody just wants to, you know, hit an edible and start jamming and whatnot. And uh, so I, I think it's probably worth talking a little bit about your musical background and then how, um, Maybe any stories that relate to, uh, I, it, it doesn't have to just be psilocybin, but definitely how psilocybin has influenced you as a musician. Yeah, for sure. I mean, music has been there probably around the same time as when I first started to eat them. I played in some bands in high school, which definitely, I was, I had a lot of built up anger for some reason. I don't even know why I had so much anger back then, but I did. And being in a metal band and being able to go there and just kind of scream yeah. through this microphone and say kind of whatever I wanted with these other friends of mine that were, they were playing and doing the same thing for their reasons, but on their instruments, their guitars or their drums, right? And man, we really, we, we connected and I, I, I fell in love with music right then and there. You know? and yeah, I've played in lots of bands over the years. It's been a really good time and I started doing my own stuff. I went to School for audio engineering to learn to record music, do live sound reinforcement. So I kind of did that too. But nice. Still just rocking, man. Whatever you know, just for myself because it's a way for me to vent. And writing songs, you know, I love just being some dreams and just sitting there. I'll track something down. Nowadays, it's really easy, like to get a home studio with the way. Yeah. And yeah, man, it is. Yeah. Uh, one of my buddies from LA. So uh, I moved from. Michigan to LA after I got a, a degree to, to write screenplays and want to go work in Hollywood but I was in a band so I convinced the band to go to LA and uh, uh, the basis for that band uh, he became ultimately our drummer and then one of my high school buddies he was our bassist anyway those two are still out in LA still uh, making music pretty regularly and uh, they, they uh, we're talking with me not too long ago about shrooms and uh, my, my the the drummer buddy he said you know he's like I have this I have a piece of music I've been working on and I just know something's not right with it and I just kind of you know put it to the side for a while and uh, he's like then we'll just be hanging out and uh, eat some eat some shrooms and he's like 
And then all of a sudden, all the answers just flood in. And he's like, I had just run back, open up the project. And he's like, and it just, it's there. He's like, it just solve all the problems instantly. It's like it, un it was there, but it unlocked it for him in his head. Yeah, man, for sure. It's like that. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so so what was your first instrument? Drums. Okay. I, I mean, you're tight. That does not surprise me. Thanks. Yeah, I, um, I played drums and then went to guitar and I played guitar for, I still do, and then vocals came just a little bit after the guitar because I wanted to kind of learn to sing and play. Nirvana was one of my biggest inspirations. And now, so we're talking like early 90s. And I was just like, yeah, man, I, I just tried to learn to play a lot of Nirvana songs, self taught on everything. Like, I would put the song on it, fucking figure it Same out. Figure it out. Yeah. I wouldn't nice. stop till I did. And like I said, just after that, I was like, well, if I do that, then. I want to try a microphone to, to see what my voice sounds like. It's the first time you kind of talk back to yourself, right. record yourself back. It's kind of strange. But I was like, but I loved yeah. it. I was like, oh, man, I really like this. And then I was like, well, what if I try really screaming into it? I was like, wow, okay. Right. Yeah, I'm there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I still do. I'll, I'll, still, I'll still let them out. Well, that screams out. Not as much as I used to. Some of the metal bands I played in, you know, we were playing hour-long sets, and it was just five-minute songs of just screaming, man. You kind of got to be conditioned to do that, you know. Yeah. I get just hop right in the saddle and get going again right now. I just, my only training is my three kids. I, I mean, yeah. got a little scream training there, but yeah, that's yeah. about it. No, kids are amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you also make independent films yeah um <clears throat> pretty impressive Thanks, uh, uh we're gonna play a little something here but what uh i, I get the music a lot of teenagers want to make music you know yeah. teenagers connect with music sure. connect with their feelings emotion and that that's a pretty organic thing that happens i think in almost any town anywhere yeah but not everybody says i want to make movies yeah so I'm a, I'm a movie buff like i love movies man okay like, i really love movies. I, I watch them all the time my favorite ones i'll watch them over and over and over and over and over i study them mm -hmm. Not even like, a movie like uh killer clowns from mars <laughs> yeah that's a good one driller yeah. killer yeah my favorite movie is goonies that's a great I a, movie i have a goonies tattoo in the forearm. nice so, like, Labyrinth, you know, I, I love Labyrinth. That's an amazing movie. It was way yes. out of time. So you were, um, I get the sense, I'm also a pretty huge movie buff. Nice. There are just something about a story for me. Yeah. That, uh, the, and the characters in the story and the things those characters face and deal with, that uh, that really helped me. Probably equally, if not more so, even than music. Music I connected to on an emotional level. Um but, but the movies, there was something about the story that just really mattered to me, certain stories. Definitely, yeah. Um, so, so when did you start, when did you make the leap and say, well, I think I need to try to do this myself? Well, I just was like, I don't know. I wanted to do music videos for the music that I was creating, and I wanted All to right. figure out how to do it. So I kind of started by doing that with, like, um, Time, it was just like a really like one of the first digital cameras that came out it wasn't very nice or anything but it was like kind of hockey didn't take very good video and i just made these videos to my music and kind of the editing programs i found were really close to the recording programs as far as the software yeah. well. so i was able to navigate quite quickly through things and then i was just like well this is a, a lot of fun i can kind of make a movie about whatever i want to yeah. and i started to make some pretty weird ones and i entered some local uh like film festivals and then some people kind of were just like well who's this guy and what are these what, what, you, what, what film school did you go to or whatnot it's like right oh, what film school that's what i would have asked when i worked in hollywood i would have said all right where'd you just graduate from usc and yeah a good buddy of mine he has gone to a film school he's doing amazing things he's helped me on 
almost all of my films, you know, he's, he's the kind of guy I can call up and be like, hey, bro, I got this idea. Can you come help me? You know, I'm like, let's film it. He'll come do it. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I have a clip. Right. Um, I'd love to play it if you're okay with that. I'm cool with that. All right. So oh, this is... Now, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, some of you guys, if you guys are listening to, like, uh, you know, John Mayer or whatnot, his music is just like uh, those heroic doses, right? It's uh, <laughs> it's intense. Yeah. So some of his films are pretty out there. Now, I love out there. I, I relate and feel very at home with out there. Uh, not everybody will. Anyway, yeah. this clip, this is this is the beginning of uh, a film entitled Bradley. Um, uh, let's we'll just play it. Yeah. Hello. Oh, uh, hello. Sorry if I frightened you. I didn't mean to if I did. No, you didn't scare me. I just don't usually see many people up here. What's your name? What? Your name. Bradley. Huh, Bradley. I'm Timmy. But my friends, they call me Tim. You, uh, out here all alone, Bradley? Uh, yeah, I like to bike alone. You know, every day, thousands of kids, like you, just disappear because they were alone. <laughs> every day. See, now, when I first watched this, I didn't have the context. Now I'm thinking about you as 14-year-old. Robin shroom growers for their mushrooms thinking uh, that somehow so, some old uh, demons inspired inspired the story and um, and yeah like you said you're out in the middle of nowhere that forests in the middle of nowhere feel a little bit different than the ones that are like a mile off of the highway yeah sure and I don't know people do just freaking disappear man like there's they do. people around here that have just disappeared like without literally trace and it's like yeah. here they go here they go well if you guys <laughs> want to find out you gotta watch the rest of bradley yeah <laughs> okay one 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 uh option i like dark films too i, I really like dark films you know what I mean? so that has a little piece of it in there yeah <laughs> that's awesome so i mean this this is what what i like about you you make horror films you do heavy metal uh music you grow amazing mushrooms you're a soup you're a family man you got a family you're a good dad you're a good husband you uh uh my wife puts up with a lot man and i just gotta throw a quick shout out she's probably watching baby like thank you without her i wouldn't even be where i am there's been so many times where i wanted to quit because it was just beating me up at times in my life. And then he's always been like, what are you talking about? Put your grass back down there and keep doing yeah. what you're doing. They are good for that. They, yeah. they, uh, 
they you know they want you to work out and they want you to um, yeah. not fall apart. So if you're having a bad day, they whip you back into shape. Yeah, they sure mm -hmm. do, buddy. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, kids, yeah, kids are also. Uh, I my joke is kids. I say I got friends who don't have them. I say kids are great. They're they're like uh, the absolutely the coolest hobby. That you can never stop doing for the rest of your life. Do it. Because they're a lot of work. Oh, but man. I tell you what. We sure are, man. And you know what? I, it's I good work. Way, and this was just recently coming out of a psychedelic experience. Looking at my, my youngest. And it was like, it's like a form of time travel. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You get to live again and, and watch a mini of your creation Yep. Go through and live this life. You know, it's it's like this. It's amazing, man. It's really cool. I love it. It really yeah. is. And then you feel good about yourself because it's like, Daddy, can you do this for me? I don't know how to do it. Oh, you don't know how to tie your shoe? Right. Let me show you. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 It really. It's uh. It's like that stupid Trace Atkins song. You know, you're gonna miss this. It go. It really does go by fast. I'll, I'll, it seems like I just had my first one yesterday, man. My well, oldest is gonna be uh, 15 pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like wow. It goes so fast. It does. Yeah. But the shrooms give us. I feel like. I don't know. The, the, the shrooms make you understand that your brain is running like a base program all the time. And that yep. it can run other programs. And that there are other things to see that your brain is not like on a regular basis set up to see unless yep. you take steps to be able to see those things. And those things that you can see can, like you said absolutely change how you relate to the world you live in it's, it's, can't can't get enough of it oh, man. sure i know like now that i grow the way i do it's such a it keeps me in such a cycle that you know what i mean as soon as something interferes with that cycle or i break it a bit it really interferes with a lot of different things in my life so yeah i try to make sure i keep them in the loop at all times Everything's groovy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, I mean, there was a period of time not too long ago you weren't doing much growing. Yeah. So how? So over the and you said that there was a period of time when you were younger where you weren't uh, ingesting. Yeah. What What happens in those times? What? Um, you know, what are those cycles that, that you go in and out of? What do you think that is? Well, I know exactly what it was. It was our drugs and alcohol. Okay. I got, I got sucked into doing a hell of a lot of cocaine and drinking a lot of whiskey. And that kind of took over a lot of things in my life. And it was pretty bad and pretty, pretty hard thing for somebody to try to, to beat when you're not telling anybody. Right. You know, that was probably the hardest part about it. And when I came back to Mushrooms, they 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 told me what was up. You know, I tried to mix the two together, and you know, that shows me right there. Like, you can't do this with one. Uh, before it's not what we're about. Right. To stop it. You know, and I did. I just hit six years. It's amazing, dude. That's that's what I like to hear. Cause cause we need uh we, we need more mushmans. Yeah, that's a mm -hmm. And I believe you know I like I dose quite regularly, and I think that's my medicine keeps me good, man. And I'd way rather be doing that than go back. To so, yeah, I believe that you know alcohol, whether or not you enjoy it, that's that's totally on you. I'm just saying for me, I think it's a bad thing. That without it and replaced with mushrooms, how much happier everything would be, and how much happier you would be. Yep. I mean, so working in an ER, I take care of people where I see what alcohol. Forget about you know the alcoholism. I see physically what it does to people's bodies and their livers and and, and beyond. And yeah, it's a It's it's 
It's yeah. not. I know our ancestors. You know, everything was mead. Everything had to be fermented. I get it. Um, but what we're drinking now, we're drinking some pretty concentrated alcohol. And if if you can't keep it to to moderation, it it, it has an effect on your body. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. To each, to each their own. Yeah. I just know for me. Yeah, and the, um, you know, I think about my best night drunk out of my mind. I forgot half of it. All my worst decisions I've made in my life, yeah. I'm drunk. Yeah. I've made, exactly. I've made a lot. <laughs> but luckily, I feel like I can, I can come back from all of that. Yeah. Yeah, Not yeah the... Um, we just gotta love everybody and love everything. And just, that's what life's about, man. And it goes so fast. So it goes so fast, and regardless of what you believe in, uh, religiously, spiritually, in the afterlife, uh, what we know for a fact is we got this life. Yeah, we got it right now. And I know yeah. that when I'm gone, the people that are here that care about me are you know, they'll miss me. That's one thing. You know, exactly. I try to treat everybody with respect and love. I'm with well, you. And you do that, dude. I'm just going to tell you right now, you really, like, set the bar for me. You were one of the first where I was like, okay, it's not all just uh, culture vultures and, uh, you know, uh, people that didn't make as much money in cannabis as they wanted to now trying to make their money, you know, in mushrooms. There, there are some people who are way beyond that. Sure, you know, everybody wants to make a buck for their hard work. That is absolutely the way of mankind. That is fine. But the um, the the kindness and the goodwill that you presented to me instantly was, was really, uh, it, it was great. And you, you encouraged me when, in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, you and maybe two or three other people were... Um, the, the positivity and the light that, that kept me going when a lot of other people made me want to be like, i got to get out of this place. This place maybe isn't what I thought it was going to be. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that I had influence one way or another. I joined Instagram, you know, just at first was to maybe try to meet some new people around and it kind of turned into a whole, whole, a whole thing. It's now, yeah, it's a whole thing and I, and I love it because... I've met so many amazing people, man. Like, you guys are so awesome. All of you. And so you're awesome. a visual artist, so, you know, you, you get a chance to show your reverence for, for fruit in a special way. I mean, you, you some of your pictures are absolutely beautiful. I like to see them, so I show them. Yeah. If anybody ever has any questions about anything for me, just DM me and I'll get back to you. Yeah, so we have... Uh, um, I, I I think Mushman was telling me he had a, a strike on his account. He doesn't want to lose his account. He's had it for a long time. I know how you feel, buddy. Um, I worry about that as well. Um, but so if, if you guys are not friends and you're uh, on Instagram and you want to connect with Mushman9000, um, just send him a little message with the, the code word homie. Homie. The code word is homie. And I picked that because yeah. this guy up in Canada... Wearing his flannel jacket, playing his heavy metal music, always says, "All right, I'll talk to you later, homie." So, <laughs> yeah. Homie, all you my homies. Home yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my buddies haven't seen him for a minute. Got to pop him on screen here. Hold on. Let me pull off my. Uh, Pull off the overlay. All right. Gonna shout out another one of my weirdos that I love. Steve, Steve uh, Bonus. Steve. This, this is another guy who we are gonna have on <laughs> sometime soon, trust me. Yeah. Um, He's amazing, man. Yeah, man, we gotta embrace our, our uniqueness. Yep. You know, we can't. Uh, we can't be like sitting in the flower bed of life going like, I got to look like all these other tulips. Right. Just, just be, be your own whatever you are. Right. Uh, yeah. 
Anyway, uh, anything you want to talk about? Any stories you want to tell? Uh, I don't know. I guess. Like, I have lots of different ones, but like, what do you want to, what do you want to talk about? Like some trips or some? I mean, no one hates hearing a good trip report. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, also, maybe, I, I mean, I kind of liked hearing a little bit about how you tried straw and straw was kind of a pain in the ass for you. Um, so, yeah, maybe things you tried that didn't work out or uh, definitely just a, a classic trip story is never a bad call. Okay, well, let's see, so after straw, we did uh, walk in like Martha's, giant walk in Martha's, and we were growing in. Trays. We were growing in cool domes, but they weren't open. So we had a, we had outside of this this poly room, we piped in from a garbage can that had ultrasonic humidifiers in it, and that was in a heated room, and that would pump the humidity into the tent. And it worked for a bit, but that I found too was really nasty because the water would cool up. Right. So we started to make drains, and then it was like. You're mopping twice a day in there, you know what I mean? Because it was just right. getting out of control. I couldn't quite regulate it right. So at that point, we kind of made the decision to be, well, why don't we just not do this room and, like, grow inside of these trays? They had to come with the domes. We used to pick the domes off. All right. So I started growing those for a long time. That's what I was growing in, like, ski cans and underground bunkers. And I tried all different all different ways to do them, you know what I mean? As far as heat and everything else goes and different ratios of this to that. Right. And I kind of got into tubs the same time I got into like, I don't know, almost the same time. Well, I kind of all learned it at once. It all kind of came very quickly, man, everything. Once I started getting into it, and like I said, I had these videos to follow, so it kind of steered me in the right direction, I think. I think. So now, when you were when you were pumping all the humidified, when you were using that like those little external fogger setups, pumping in all the, the humidified air, yeah, and having the water issues, yeah. then you took your domes, you took the top off. Were you still pumping humidified oh. air in, but just less of it? Less of it, yeah. Less of it, yeah. Okay. We figured out we had to put it on a timer, so it wasn't just constantly trying. To right. Okay. The time I thought it was like, oh, we got to have it at a hundred. You know what I mean? Our age, and it was like, that's not even really true. You don't have to do that. But I didn't know at the time, and it was really, really wet in there. You know, he's going in, I feel like, damn, it's wet. And everything's wet. I was like, okay, so we got to put this on a timer. We got it going on a timer, but it was still really wet in there, like too wet. I didn't like it. I was like, this is, I mean, they were growing, though. Like, I was growing some really nice mushrooms in there, but I was like, this is not too much work. The re and re's, like taking every single shelf out. We have plastic shelving, so we'd have to re bleach everything out and right. rinse it all off and then put it all back. And yeah, once I, once I kind of ditched the walk in rooms that just went to tubs or home trays, it changed a lot. And then from the trays going into the tubs, I really liked that too. I tried all different styles of tubs. <laughs> I've tried shotgun chambers and mono tubs and all different types of bowl sizes and placements and filters. And at the end of the day, I'm a bowl guy. I just, uh, like I said, hand pan it. So you got a, it's about a 27 quart. It's unmodded. Unmodded, yeah. And so you're trying to hit. All boys. So yeah, so there's a lot of atmosphere in there, so to speak. Yeah. So you got, you don't got holes. You're not doing fancy airflow tactics. Okay. I've done them all, and I, and I found that for my, for what I can do, because like I said, right now I do have the time to be in my room three times a day right. to fan yeah. the notes. Okay, so if I wasn't, I probably yeah would go back to doing some molds okay. because that works really well. But for what I'm doing right now, getting these particular canopies that I'm getting is the routine that I'm doing, and, and it seems to work. Nice. So when you're so you're doing three times a day, one yeah. minute, yeah. approximately, you're just moving a fan across them. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and now, will. are you still doing a lot of those, like the um, the uh, 
trays with the yeah. drums. Well, I'm just going back to those now. Okay. Because last summer I shut everything, got shut down. I got wiped out with like a huge amount. Because I was like, okay, I'm not going for a bit anyway. So I'm coming back now and I find that I have a really solid uh, technique that I use for these poems. So I was just kind of waiting to get the right genetics to start using them. So it's right. so right now I am kind of getting back in because I can get a lot more of them into my room than the other ones. They fit better on the shelves. You almost get two for every one. And they produce, you know, they produce really well. So you guys know, or a lot of you know, they get really good flushes out of those. Yeah, there's like a little uh, little fad going on right now. The first guy who ever told me about growing in trays was uh, Stunnin21 on Instagram. And he's also the originator of Drippy Corn, which is now, uh, you, you know, making making its way around circles here and there. A lot of people trying drippy corn. Um, so he, he was the first, and he said it was just because he, he worked for a big cannabis grow up, and uh, uh, they would toss stuff out, and he took it home. And kind of like you, he had that attitude of, what can I grow in? And it seemed like it was worth a shot, and he, he, was, he was enjoying it. Um, oh, there, there we go. Here we go. Got to pull him up. He's on. Yeah, this is another good one. Good people. Good people are what keep, uh, you know, good, positive, helpful uh, people who share information and realize that, like, this, the, the name of the game is not about hiding information. It's about helping each other out. And uh, we're sharing that knowledge. Yes. We, all, we, all, we all know it. We all know how to do it. We all yeah. understand it. Yeah. Now, that you do, you do sort of remind me from time to time that um but everybody's got to do their own thing too everybody's yeah. got to try it like it, it's great to share the information but if i just sit here on the information and do nothing with it yeah i'm I, i'm missing out we do got to get out there and try stuff yeah i think that's why the fafo uh, attitude is so popular you know f right and find out you know there's definitely not a right or a wrong way you just you just get in there and start doing an experiment thing. Yes. That's what growing them's all about, you know. And like I had a lot of failure, but did that make me not want to? If anything, it made me want to try harder at what I was doing. Right. So, yeah, I had a, I've had a few people who, you know, they come to me and say, hey, help me out. I want to get this right. And, uh, and they listen to me, and it goes really well for yeah. quite a while, and then they'll get hit with some contamination. They got lucky in the beginning, or just eventually, as you keep growing, yeah. if you're not really good about cleaning, um, it'll catch up to you. And then they get real defeated, because they started off and everything was going so well, and I'm like, well, this is what separates the men from the boys right here. Do you, yeah, Is this not, really your thing or not? If it, if some contamin is gonna get you this down, well, it's yeah. okay, that's it's fine. You gotta, yeah. you gotta get some of that, and I still get it. You know, yeah, and, you and still get it. Does. And it's just, it's part of it. The, the name of the game is try to get as little of it as you can along the way. But number right. one, enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the whole, the whole love of all of it because it's, it's amazing the whole process. Yeah. So well, you know, as a, as a musician, you know, like. Work with sport prints. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people skip prints all together these days. I'm finding. Them. Like, I love them. I take. I take them. Anything that drops is. I, I'm trying to take spore prints. Um, and boy, if I get a big, gorgeous spore print, I'm just pretty much in love with it. I, I can't help myself. Yeah. But uh, what you were just talking about remind me of. Uh, uh, one of my friends growing up, he, you know, he thought for sure he wanted to be a guitar player, but you know what he didn't like to do? He didn't like practice guitar. Oh, yeah. uh, so he didn't become a guitar player. Now, the other buddy of mine, he did like to play the guitar. He yeah. liked to sit in his room all day. We'd be like, hey, you know, come out, come, let's go do something. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring something out. Well, now he's a beast of a guitar player because that's what he liked to do. That yeah. that daily practice. Yeah. 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 You, and you gotta you gotta have the right attitude too to find that. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. I don't want to do uh, pour some some plates, but then once I get into it, I, I go, 
how can I get into this as, as fully as I can and it becomes a zone activity and it's great it's healthy it helps my mental health for sure they tell you kind of what's going on. That's what I love about the whole ride. I mean, yes. I know that they're 100% in control, not the other way around. You know, they feel all sorts of things. Like, they, they get her tub a big hug and a smooch her root. You know, be like, oh, <laughs> you know, have a, have a good trip with a buddy. You know, I like you. Yeah. Give them a smooch. You know, fast yeah. travels to you, you know. Let them know. Yeah. Because they feel it. They really do. We're connected. They're feeling what you're feeling when you walk in there. They can feel your presence around. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You go in there feeling like, oh, man, <sighs> today I got to clean tubs. Like, well, they're around. They're like, you know what? Today I don't feel like growing as much. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And this, is, this is a, we've had this echoed from the good fun guy as well. Yeah. Um, I believe it. Sometimes I just want to, with, with the mycelium, I just want to touch it sometimes. I, it's like it's talking to me, and it, it's like, touch me, and I'm like, well, I can't do that. Gosh darn it. Yeah. That's good, you know. It's, outsiders might think, oh, my God, can you imagine if somebody has no idea what we're doing? Just listen to the last one minute of this podcast. It'd be like, what is wrong with these grown men? But it's true. It's good. It's good to, good to care about the things that you grow. I mean, it's a lot of work. That for me, that's why I I try to eliminate contamination, because I, I just care about the mushrooms. If I lose them, I get sad. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do too. You know what I mean? I get really sad when I lose when I lose grain bags or the jars. Now it's like, uh, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like it's a, it's a bummer, bummer that I it's my fault that happened. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, I feel like I let them down. And sometimes I feel like I let, like, whoever I got the genetics from, I also feel like, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Well, I can use you as an example. Uh, <clears throat> I isolated, you sent me some prints of uh, Istois, and I <clears throat> started working them on uh, agar and thought I had them looking pretty good, tossed them on some grain, the grain went bad, and I was, like, ashamed of myself for that. Well, it's like, yeah. uh, That is a harder one to go through, but... It happens. I'm mean, just keep growing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I've got a lot that I want to get to that I just I haven't got to lately. I've just been finding certain strains that I'm that I'm enjoying to, the most out of uh, as far as getting the recreational high off of. I guess. Yeah. So that's why I'm growing some different strains. And, uh, now, so let's talk about. Um, I made the mistake, I you know, kind of like the Pokemon vibe where you just want to grow everything. And I'm now starting to get to where I want to just really grow one thing for a while. I recommend finding your favorite. That yeah. your, your, that your, your favorite that you ingest and connect with. Yeah. Grow with that one, man. Just go at it and see what happens. Definitely. Good advice. Yeah, it's, it's so easy these days because we just get inundated with all the photos yeah. of all these cool uh, mushrooms. People understand a lot of it. They want to be trying to speed it up. Be right. patient. Once you build those tubs, it's just like everybody has their own way from there. I incubate mine until they're, until they're ready to go. But they're fully yeah. colonized, and I put them in fruiting conditions. So you can put them right in the fruiting conditions, and you can have the same success. So. Yeah, I, I have found that to be the case as well. It's not really, uh, I have not noticed any benefits of, I mean, maybe for Enigma, but not, not for any regular fruit. It doesn't seem to matter. Really seems to be, like you said, I can, I do see the correlation, the quicker um, liquid culture or uh, plate, you know, transfers, the faster it rips through your grain is the better indicator of, of the overall speed and health of the fruit you're going to get from that. You want to go quick too. Like obviously everyone will bring the grains where to go, but like I'll take a lot of individual grains and transfer those onto each individual cup. You know I mean? Like one grain. And then that right there, once that's fully contained, I'll transfer that like a mama bag of grain, which is one quart. Right, okay. 
And once that goes, I transfer that to a two port bay or a four port bay, whatever I'm going to spawn in. Right. That, that's actually kind of reminds me of. Uh, it goes really fast. You can get that going, man. And like right. with, in no time, if you did 100 individual grains, as long as you've got a good, you know, good thing going. Gonna go like wildfire, man. And the next thing you know, you're gonna have as much as you want quite quickly. And it's all the same. Yeah, yeah. I don't do it as much because I'm not growing as much volume. So I, I, man, I, I had to tone down. I had to get smaller and smaller tubs and really rethink stuff and go smaller ratios and all that. But. Um, yeah, for sure, the grain to grain I think is underutilized. Yeah, definitely, big time. Like if you're wanting, especially if you're wanting to go bulk and big and fast, grain to grain all the way, and then grain to grain further to the agar and big individual grains, they go a long way. Yeah, and even if the grains at the bottom of your bag after your transfers, you can use those, break those up, put those on individual place, let them go. You're just gonna keep spreading it and going. Man. Yeah, really exactly. Bad. I had to do that in a jar that was pretty contaminated, pretty sour, but there was one little spot on it where it looked like uh, bacteria hadn't really gotten to yet. So grabbed yep. a few kernels and yeah, yep. problem okay. solved. Back in business. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, um, let me see. Uh, let's open it up for a few questions. We're getting pretty close to the two hour mark. Um, if anybody in uh, the the chat here has any questions uh post them and we'll we'll have mush man answer them for you yeah sure that's cool too <laughs> um, we uh you know we're over here at the old geeky podcast we're trying to not run these three three and a half hour uh videos anymore I had a few people just be like hey dude just do more shorter videos so yeah. so we're, we're working on that um get lost in conversation exactly yeah, there's a lot a lot to get into all right so i got a few questions here all right keith wants to know what does a clone tray 10 by 20 yield i don't know yeah, it depends, I guess, on uh, lots of different variables, what kind of what you're growing. Yeah. It's kind of hard to say. Yeah. What would uh, So let me ask you this question. This might be a better question that sort of piggybacks that. Yeah. Um, what containers do you feel have given you your best yields? Do you feel like there's yeah. one container that does better? Bigger, unwanted tubs give me the most. They give me the densest, biggest, thickest roots. I can usually rely on three quarters of a pound nice so squash lately I, i've done over a pound nice all right i got some more questions all right simple one flacos fungi wants to know favorite strain to run right now uh, right now, I'm really enjoying a little cut that I got from used to go by Elon Mush on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, he said it was originally like a DC back version that he worked on for a while, and it's just blowing out some, some fucking beasts. And I've been eating them, you know, and they're getting me pretty ripped, so I think I'm going to keep going with those ones. Yeah. And what is that called? Do you... I don't. He calls them Timbits. Timbits. Oh yeah, yeah, Timbits. Yeah. Nice. So that's what I'm eating right now. They're good. All right. Oh. Scrolling down. I don't even know what this means. Maybe you know what he's talking about, Darren T. Yeah. Yo, bro, did you really grow underwater? I, this is a. Uh, I know this guy. Oh. Yeah, he's a funny dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I get through underwater. Okay. <laughs> All right, here, okay, we got a real question, finally. 
All right. Punk wants to know, where do you keep your hu humidity for your uh, fruiting chamber? So... When, I, no, obviously, I think he's, I mean, not the tub. If, if you're growing open tray, yeah. where are you trying to keep it? If you're growing open tray, I would recommend not having it in the room. I would recommend pumping into a room so that we can control the heat and the temperature of the water that's going in. But, like, <laughs> how, could, do you think you could run... Because I got the same problem that you were talking about. If I try to hit 100% humidity, I just yeah. get sick of the maintenance yeah. with all the water. Yeah. fine. But like I said, I'm growing inside a tub, so it's you don't it's have whole thing. Right. That comes back to knowing what my field capacity is for those tubs. You know, like yeah. I get them a little extra wet for that purpose, and they get it pretty wet inside of those tubs. And it seems to work really well that way. If I would, I've had them where I was a little bit drier. They don't produce as good. They really like the wet and they like to be that man. Yeah. Every time I have something underwhelm me, it's because I didn't have just a really humid environment inside the tub. Yeah, it dried out a little too soon. Yeah, you want it nice. Oh, Darren is totally messing with us. Damn you, Darren. All right. Um, so here's it. We, we brought up Contam a little bit. Um, if you get trick, what do you do? Do you do you try any of the treatments or do you just toss? Yeah, I toss. I toss. Every I day. do too. And then I, I use my all the Yeah. Yeah. And I'll start again. I'm the same way. I just don't. Who did I talk to? I think. Was it Dave? Dave Wombat was saying, like, oh, yeah, I'll have a whole pile of tubs. One will have trick and nothing around it will have trick. I'm like, I have not had that experience. I have not gotten that lucky. Um, if I get trick in, in one tub or bag, I tend to have it yeah. uh, go next to years. it. Yeah. yeah, usually from a transfer when I did. I went bad or something. Indeed, I'll see it. But you see it, it's like, oh, man. Back to that, I gotta get rid of it. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Um, well, you know, somebody wanted to know best way to get a hold of you if your account gets flagged. Um, I mean, it's not gonna because you guys are gonna do the homie code and it's all gonna work out great. Um, so don't jinx it, dude. But um, if that were to happen, it's like what all the rest of everybody does on Instagram. They start a new account again and do all the work all over again and bug their friends to, you know, post a story so that everybody adds them. And, yeah. Um, it happens, know. it happens, and we'll find me. We'll find you. So uh, here's a quick question. How do you prep your grain? Do you do just traditional soak and simmer tech? Yeah. Well, I used to soak, okay, and I used to soak for upwards of 15, 16 hours. Okay. So I don't soak anymore. Now I just rinse, and I'll rinse my grain until they're clean. Absolutely clean. Right here. And then boil. I'll bring them up to a boil. Rolling boil. You know, they're, once again, this comes into me. I, I taste them. That's when I know they're 100% ready to go. I can tell by okay. this in my mouth. Just kind of giving it a little chew, and I'll be, you know, oh, this needs another five minutes, or this one's done right now. All right. And I'll strain them. And then once they're strained, I put them out on my my rack. I got a cooling rack. And at first, I let the steam kind of dry the grains themselves. I think that's an important process. So it's almost like a mound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's spread, it out. it's spread out to a certain, like, thickness, I don't know. Turn a fan on it, speed things up a little bit, and it's ready to bag and tag it. There I go. I guess you put it two hours. So when, so when you're trying to figure out whether you boiled your, your grain long enough, the rye berries, and you're, you're biting it, yeah. you, I'm assuming, but maybe you can paint a better picture, you want it chewy, but you don't want it mushy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's kind of what I go for with my corn too. You want it 
the way I like it, I shouldn't say you, you can have, you can do whatever you want. I the way I like it is when it's just about to pop. Right. You grab a piece and it's like you put it in there and you can bite in and then you don't know that great it, it pops. It doesn't mush apart. It's yeah. different. Once you overcook it, you go to bite it, you don't it. Now it's that's not good. Not too hard to, and yeah. And it's just it's gotta have it's just gotta pop. You know what I mean? It's very easy. I had a I had a run of popcorn where almost everything burst. Yeah. And I just ran it anyway, and guess what? Yeah. It worked. Betcha. You know what? I, I used to take burnt or like burst uh, rye grapes out. I'd sit there, man. Oh, I did that kind of thing too, yeah. Because I was told at the time, I was like, well, you can't put that in there. That's going to cause a contamination. I'll do this right. home for you. No, man, it will, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of those things uh, we've been told. You can't do this, can't do that. Yeah. And then well, you try it and you're like, well, I guess yeah, I yeah. should just try you know, more things more. I've often. done a lot of things where people go, you can't do that for sure. Like, I just can't. Yeah. So I did, and that's just how I do it. Maybe you can't, but I did it. <laughs> yeah, or there are some techs where somebody goes, yeah, I swear by this tech, it works great for me, here's the results, and then five people try it, and they go, you're fucking crazy, that did not work. But it works for them, so who cares? Yeah, yeah if, if anything, on, I, I haven't made one of those little disclaimer videos yet, like, you know, in the beginning of Ridiculousness or something like that. But, you know, this is this is entertainment. You can either just listen to... Uh, the the guests talk about what they do, or you can try it. But you know, it's not. A, there's no laws to this. There's no. It's just what you want to do. The best thing you can do is to just try different things and experiment. Yeah. With things. Try fruiting in something that you normally wouldn't fruit it for the sake of trying it out and see what the mycelium does for you. Yeah. It's um. Sometimes when you fail, you learn more. Like if uh, if you just follow directions and you're making fruit, I mean, yeah. you're not really learning anything. You're getting fruit, which is great, but yeah. but the learning process is more when, when you're screwing up and going ah. The wisdom comes from all those mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I've made a lot of. Them. Yeah. That's right. All right, man. I think we're winding down. Um, I, I think we I think we've hit all the questions. I think we've given the world uh, a taste of uh, ev everything that I love about you. And uh, uh, I, I I imagine you're going to be uh, doing some friend request acceptances uh, tomorrow for a couple minutes. I think so. I well, think I so. Yes. People, yeah, come say hello to watch that. Cool, man. Well, one day, one day we're going to get up there. If everything keeps going well, I'm going to come up there. We're going to do a remote podcast up in yeah. Canada. It's going to, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I got a recommendation here to do uh, your music video as an outro. So I have absolutely no problem with that, guys. Let's do it. All right, so thanks again. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you soon, brother. All right, uh, next, next week, mystery show. You'll uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, give me two seconds to pull up this uh, outro video here. All right, here we go. Peace out, guys. Yeah, I take vitamins every day. That's a six-gram microdose of psilocybin. Way I connect with the future. Keep aliens at bay. Blast off to the universe. Inhale to me, three I play. All of a lung, I've been taking the time. I'm suckling life, and I almost died. I'm feeling alone. I begin to cry. Then I wake up, and I realize the moment we're born is the moment we try to understand humans and the skip we call life. <laughs>
city hands, Mr. Hooper. 